around the world, our healthcare professionals are really up against a challenge right now, and in some cases, they don't have adequate PPE to protect them. I thought, well, maybe there's something I can do about this, and decided to look into 3D printing whatever I could. Turns out, a face shield is not that difficult to recreate at home that works just as good as the professional units and gives adequate protection for the user. In this video, we'll take a look at the ones I'm making, how I went about making them. We'll play around with my new K40 laser cutter. It's a 40 watt CO2 laser that happens to be great timing because it works great for cutting these shields. I'll give you the settings I use, the instructions, pretty much everything I can that you can duplicate these at home on your own 3D printer or laser cutter or whatever you have. You can make them by hand if you want to. This episode made possible in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for all your custom printed circuit board needs. They offer numerous services, different styles of PCBs, even assembly and parts supply. So if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw this from start to finish when I reached out to Naomi and Chris to find out, did they know anyone with a design file for an easy to make headset? Somewhat easier than the really popular one right now. I wanted something that could be printed fast and cut from existing materials, particularly the faceplate. I wanted to be able to use plastic that anyone can get. Well, sure enough, here we go. The design and everything is linked below. Uh, I was able to download the, it from the designer in Sweden. He made it available open source, which was absolutely awesome. Pulled it into Cura. The settings are pretty straightforward. Uh, I also linked my GitHub down below for all my Cura settings for my different printers in case it might help you. I loaded things up, hit print, and sure enough, things came out pretty good first try. In a little over two hours, the i3 Mega made short work of this headband. It fits great. It's nice and flexible with the 50% infill, good and strong. I had no issues whatsoever. It just worked first try. Here's a time lapse. It should be said that this ultra base print bed on the i3 Mega is just incredible. It's great for production parts like this, but you just walk up, pull your part off, hit go, and you're back printing another one. No messing around with glue or scrapers or anything like that. At this point, I went out to my garage where I've set up my K40 40 watt laser cutter. Uh, I have a video on that coming up too, guys, if you want to see a review. But so I'm not, I'm pretty new to laser cutting. So I definitely have some things to learn. As you'll see here, the first design cuts right off the edge of the paper. No good whatsoever. This was due to the fact the design came from a friend in Sweden and here in North America, we use a different size of paper. Our 8.5 by 11 is not the same as A4 in Europe. Minor thing to fix up. I got that fixed up in the design. I was able to run another cut. This time, it seemed to be just exactly what I was looking for. An 8.5 by 11 sheet was going to work perfectly. Now that I had my, my paper cut out, I could go ahead and test fit it into the mask. The original designer used uh, beveled edges on his and provided me a new design as well. All I had to do was modify the hole spacing a little bit. So here's where I try the paper template onto my 3D printed brackets and found out they fit pretty good, but it does need a little bit of work here. The hole spacing needs to be spread out a bit. Minor thing. This is why we do prototyping. This is why I use paper in the first place, but overall, I'm really getting excited at this point. This really looks like a viable face shield, something that anybody can use anywhere. With things under quarantine, I did what any good maker would do. I went raiding through my office cupboards and found these self-adhesive laminating sheets. And I thought, well, that might just do the trick, but only use one half of it. One side is a little thicker than the other. Back out to the garage, I got the laser cutter fired back up, but this is where my inexperience kind of shows through. I didn't know what power setting to use on the laser whatsoever, so I started off at 16%, which was way too high for this material, but it did work 
fairly well. Although I'm completely new to laser cutting, I'm finding a lot of similarities to my 3D printing workflows. Although we don't slice it, the workflow up to getting the model ready to print or cut is very similar. And ultimately, just being able to watch the machine and see a piece of material go in in one state and come out in the state we desire for the part we need for a project or, or a build is just fascinating to me. I wondered about just using the adhesive sheets but just by removing the sticky side and leaving the kind of cardboard insert and everything behind and just putting the whole works right into the laser cutter, I thought, well, that might work a lot better because we have a little bit of a layer in between. We'll give it a go. I fired up K40 Whisperer and set it to raster cut at 9% power. Sure enough, this worked out very, very well and better than I had expected, actually. I see no reason that this can't work going forward. Yes, I'm aware of the dangers of having this cover open. I did have my laser glasses on. Don't do this on your cutter. There are risks to having very high powered UV lasers right in front of your face. Once the laser finished up, I was able to take things out, take a look at it. Again, I was super impressed with how well this worked. Even at 9% power, the K40 had no problem punching through here. The holes came out just great. Just have to give them a little poke and the inserts fall out. Far less charring or smoke uh, damage on the plastic. Actually, none whatsoever. A little bit of Windex clears this right up and this is ready to go. Installing the shield on the headband is super simple. It just hooks around the little tabs on the side, wrap it around the front, shoving it down on the pegs, and then slightly spread the headband out. This is where it'd be nice to have kind of one extra hand in front of the camera here. But you spread the headband just slightly and it'll pop right on the far side. Just like that, our shield is complete and ready to go into use by anyone in medical field or in a high risk situation of exposure with droplets or particulate right into their eyes or mouth. This should do the job to protect them just as good as a commercial one. I'm pretty happy with the results. Again, I didn't make the original design. I only tweaked the face shield slightly and made this video and put my files on my GitHub. That's it. I wanted everyone else to be able to recreate what I've done here. Huge thank you to the original designers who you'll find linked right at the beginning in big bold letters of my GitHub and you can also find them on Twitter. I sincerely hope there won't be a need for these in my area, at least not an urgent one. But if there is, I think I'm ready here. I've stepped up production of these. Anytime my printer is not running on something else, it's printing off these bands. And from Amazon this week, if mail is still running, I should have plenty of the face protector sheets coming in. They're uh, acetate sheets for overhead projectors at a very reasonable price point. So I should be all set. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters and channel members for making these videos and these projects possible. Thanks to Amaze3D way back when they gave me some of this filament and this is just a fantastic use for it in my opinion. What better than to just do a project that hopefully makes the world a little better. Cheers guys. Have a great day.